Oh, hi there, guys. How's it going? Deformed not back here. You threw to pop up gaming. Just caught me there doing a little bit of beatboxing. Right, today is Retro Monday, as uh, you may know by now. Um, every Monday, we look back to the past and uh, have a look at some games that, that I used to play. Maybe you did as well. If you didn't, then maybe you've uh, you've discovered a new a new game that you enjoy. Um, today is no different. Um, we're going to go back to the past again, um, but there is a slight difference. Today is going to be more of a, a retrospective, looking back at the ZX Spectrum 48K. This was my very very first exposure to gaming. My stepdad brought down to my mum's house this black, t well, keyboard type thing. And uh, that was my first ever time I played a game on a computer. And it was uh, Chucky Egg. I remember it like it was yesterday. That feeling when you first play a game. My God, it was addictive, and it stayed with me ever since. So, I've got a bunch of games, a little collection of games that uh, that hold a lot of memories. I'm not really thought too much about, you know, what sort of memories they hold. Um, what I'm going to do is play the game, and then just see what sort of uh, memories it brings up. This show is not about views, it's not about getting as many views as possible. If it was, I'd be, I'd be doing Minecraft or Call of Duty or something like that. This is just purely about the nostalgia, about the memories, about the good times and about when things were simpler. You know, when you was a child and things were a lot simpler back then. So... Without further ado, I'm just going to crack on with this. So the first game on my list tonight is the absolute meaning of the word classic. It's called Chucky Egg. And it was released in 1983 by A&F Software. I'm telling you, back in the day, this game was popular. Oh my days. It sold over a million copies. And A&F actually stands for Doug Anderson and Mike Fitzgerald, respectively. So, let's get on with this one. We'll have a little game. We'll have a little game. Right, so, we're going to just crack on. We're on the old keyboard, it's got to be. It's got to be keys. One player. Oh my gosh, here we are. Oh my god, those no that noise when you pick up the uh, the corn. That is, that's, those triangles there, That that's actually corn. God, I haven't improved over these years. Oh wow. So, that, um, if you can see in the uh, top left corner, is that's the um, the boss bird if you like if you get further on into the game she'll actually uh, come out of the cage and attack you and believe you me you don't want to get bit on the bum I've actually really fucked this up normally you can do it in a lot less time that's it's a bit embarrassing really If you really want to see an expert on Chucky Egg, my mum and stepdad, oh my gosh. They are amazing. They managed to uh, clock this game at least three or four times. The um, So you have to collect all of the eggs. However, um, the... 
the corn, the triangle things, they actually give you uh, extra time. If you can see your time in the top, top right hand corner, if that runs down, you're fucked. You die basically. Oh, and I always hated this level. Oh, I hate this level. You've got to get on these lifts, and it's never easy. There we go. Wow, I did it. I did it without dying. Woohoo! Whee! <gasps> well, I spoke too soon, didn't I, really? On oh, that music. I remember, uh, like I said, my uh, my stepdad brought the uh, the computer around to uh, to my mum's house, and uh, it was about four o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I um, I snuck downstairs, and this game was actually in in the tape recorder. It was already loaded and everything, and. Uh, I thought, right, that's it, I'm having a go of this. Oh, bollocks. I thought, yeah, I'm having a go of this. So, yeah, so no sooner have I uh, got to grips with the game, my stepdad come downstairs and told me off and turned off the computer. I've never forgiven him for that shit. Never. So anyway, that's Chucky Egg. What a game. What a game. Great memories. Great memories. So, on to the next game we go. Right, so the next game in my collection is Manic Miner. This was released in 1983 by Bug Bite Software Limited. Um, it was originally written by Matthew Smith and later re-released by Software Projects. Um, the game itself is it's inspired by an Atari 800 game, um, Miner 249er it's called. Alright, let's get on with this. Right. First of all, this game is ridiculously hard. Well, it was for when, you know, when I used to play this. Bear in mind, I would be round about... Six to eight years old, maybe a bit older. Each level can actually be done by, um, I think, I'm not 100% with, with this, but I know some of the levels can be done without stopping. Oh, bollocks. And there's a recall as well. Oh, dear me. You've got a limited air supply. Oh, shit. It just adds to the extra pressure of this game. You know, not only is it fucking rock hard, not only is it really ridiculously difficult, but you've got a limited amount of time to do it in as well. So once you've collected your uh, rubbish or whatever, you've got to get yourself back to the uh, to this little thing here. I guess you would call it a lift or something like that. Oh, these penguins! I really, really like the graphics on this level. I really, really love the choice of colours on this level. It actually does feel a little bit cold. I've missed that tennis racket down there. Are they tennis rackets, guys? What do you think they are? I mean, would is it really right that you would find a tennis racket in, a, in the cold room, in the chiller? What do you reckon they are? Ice creams? Ice lollies? They almost look like little microphones, maybe. Oh, 
I always remember as well being really impressed with the um, with the animation on these uh, on these characters. I mean, look at the uh, the flapping wings on the bird. It was pretty good. Oh, there's a special technique to this. There's a you've got to time it just right, otherwise you end up. See, I might hit that red bird. No, I've timed it right. I did it right. Wow. That was lucky, actually. No, actually, just rewind that. That was just pure skill, that was. Pure skill. Oh, right, here we go. This is where it just gets silly now for me. And in the beginning of the video, I was talking about taking you back to simpler times, and this 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 is one of the games that kind of epitomizes that. You know, the the keys. You've got three keys: left, right, and jump. And it's and that is it. You know, that's all you need sometimes. And God, I spent hours on this game, hours. And all you needed was 48k and three keys and a silly little game called Manic Miner. It's a good job I got that key as well because oh my gosh, if if I'd have missed it, I don't think I can uh, get back. Bum flaps! And that's it, game over. I think that's a good good, good place to uh, stop that. So, here's the third game on my list, Jet Set Willy. Released in 1994 by Software Projects Limited. Uh, written by Matthew Smith. And it was a significant development in the platform game genre on the home computer just simply because of the sheer scale of the game. It was bigger than anything anyone had ever seen before. So many rooms to explore, so much to do, so much shit to, to clean up, it really was. Only for the hardcore gamer. You know, I, God bless us, when we were kids, we tried and we tried and we tried to conquer this game, but it is so difficult, it is so difficult. But here we go. <laughs> Again, it's just your three keys, but the reason I was laughing then was because um, I had a friend who, he said he had this computer on, uh, on, on the spectrum as well, and uh, it was known for being telling a few tall tales, you know, and uh, he's, he used to brag all sorts of things, like, he, he found, like, secret rooms in this game, um, rooms that were, like, really, really difficult to get to, and anyway, I called him out on it one day, and I says, well, you know, are you going to show us these amazing secret rooms that you found? So uh, we went round to his house, and uh, lo and behold, you know, it he couldn't find them, or he was like, "Oh, that's strange. The uh, the invisible platform was—it's just not there anymore." I got you. Yeah, I found you out there, boy. But yeah, the sheer scale of this game—I've actually seen a playthrough of um, someone doing the game from start to finish. It's no joke. It's massive. There's a ton of rooms, and some of them are just ridiculously difficult. Oh, if, yeah, if I remember correctly, if you go up here, there's... It's the Baobab tree, I believe, something like that. And there's this fucking horrible head that's just floating up and down. It's not this one. I think it might be a bit higher up. Let's see if we can get to it. <gasps> Shit. 
Right, I've got to be quick here. Oh, I fucked it up. But that is the Baobab tree, I'm sure of it. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, this game, wow. So many memories. Oh, on to the next one. Right, so the fourth game in my instalment is Jetpack. And this was released in what? You guessed it, 1983. Seems to be the year that all this, the uh, the Spectrum games came out in for some strange reason. Um, but yeah, this was um, uh, published by Ultimate Play the Game. And it was the first Jetman in the, uh, in the series. Um, and it was the best, in my opinion. And it was the company's very first release as well. So let's get on with this one. Using the uh, the wonders of modern technology, I'm going to play it on the Xbox 360 controller. Right, so the I... Oh my goodness, I died straight away. So yeah, the um, the premise of this game is dead simple, and I think that's why this is on my list because sometimes simple is best. The idea is to collect all the pieces to the uh, to the rocket, fill it with fuel, and fuck off. I mean, what could be easier than that? But it does get a lot harder as the game goes on. Because the uh, aliens change. Oh, look at that. Nice nice diamond. Oh, break it. A little rusty. I used to be pretty good at this game. Look at that. Look, you know when you were... Uh, sometimes when the, uh, when the enemies cross paths. The, uh, the the colours sort of merge into each other. Can't remember what that was called now. There's a name for it when the uh, when the colours when the sprites overlap. Yeah, into the spaceship. I'm trying to think of funny things to say, but you know. I'm just really into the nostalgia of it. And also these games are fucking ruthless. They really are ruthless. You need all your concentration on them, otherwise it's game over in seconds. And did you notice that back in the day? Games were a fucking hell of a lot tougher than they are now. These days, Jesus Christ, you don't really have lives as such. You, you know, if you, if you die, then it's like, yeah, no problem. Start, start again. There we go. And that, my friends, is jetpack. And now, finally, one of my all-time favourite games for the Spectrum. Oh, I had so much, so much fun with this. It's Bruce Lee, um, released in 1983, believe it or not, by US Gold. Um, it's a kind of a platform beaten up hybrid, if you like, and you can take control of, uh, of Bruce. I mean, how awesome is that? You're basically seeking to claim infinite wealth and the secret of immortality by going from chamber to chamber. And there's around about 20 chambers all in all, and you need to fight your way through. And there's this fat fucker and a skinny little twat. And they're both uh, basically just trying to mess up your day. So 
Let's crack on with this one. <coughs> oh my god. And right away, oh. Wow. Look at those graphics. Wow. It's bizarre. When I when I first played this game, I remember thinking, oh my god, the graphics are absolutely phenomenal. Oh look at that, it just just killed me straight on the first screen. And looking back now, the graphics, yeah they're okay, but as a child they took me away to they literally took me to you know Japan or wherever this place is. But now they're almost a little bit laughable. That's it. It doesn't matter how many times you kick their heads in, they still come back. Oh, I'm gonna get creamed here. What's happened? Oh dear me. Look at this, this is his first screen. I used to be able to complete this game in my sleep, but now look at me. It's embarrassing. Yeah, got him. Get the lantern. I believe what you've got to do is get the lanterns to um, unlock, I think it's that little trap door, that little red trap door at the bottom. Could be wrong though. Been a while boys and girls. Wow. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there and that is my little look back. So thank you ever so much for watching guys. My name's Deformed Nutsack, this is Pop Up Gaming, and today has been Retro Monday. Thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And oh, wait one minute, there's a little message after this for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.